Hello everyone, welcome to Study Capital. In this video, we will be talking about certain MCQs that may have an important role to play in your examination in upcoming CUCT 2024 PG entrance examination. So, the first question is, the Princess Amidli by Tennyson is, either it is a lyric, it is an elegy, a narrative poem or a dramatic monologue. So, as you know, Tennyson was a Victorian poet, one of the very important uh, writers of the time frame. You have uh, Tennyson, you have Browning, you have Matthew Arnold, three main important poets in the Victorian time frame. And this is a work, The Princess A Medley. It is a narrative poem that is written by Tennyson. Narrative poem in the sense, it is a, basically a serial comic black verse narrative poem. Serial comic means very similar to what you have during the time frame of Renaissance, the kind of drama that was written, tragic comedy, tragic as well as comic elements in the, in the, in the same drama. Same way in a poem, there are serious element as well as comic element that you will find in this poem and it is also written in blank verse and it is a narrative poem in a form of narration written by Tennyson published in the year 1847. Now at, you know, you will find that uh, Tennyson was also a poet laureate of England from 1850 to 1892. There are so many questions that they have asked regarding poet laureateship as well. It began with Dryden. Dryden was the first poet laureate of England. He became poet laureate in 1668 and just after wrote a very famous work, uh, you know, that uh, is a very important text in terms of criticism as well, essay on dramatic poesy. After that, there was you know, his uh, there was Nahum Tape, who was also a poet laureate. In 1813, uh, Robert Southey became poet laureate when Walter Scott declined to become poet laureate, right? And then there is Wordsworth. When Southey died, he became poet laureate in 1843. He remained there till 1850 as well. There was criticism of this position throughout history. You will find how Wordsworth was criticized, not only by Browning, but also by P.B. Shelley, he called him a moral enigma because he accepted this position. When he died in 1850, Tennyson became poet laureate in 1850 and he remained there till 1892, a longest position till now. And in Simon Armitage is a present poet laureate. Last year, they have asked question from this particular point as well. So this poem is basically written by uh, Tennyson and he was a poet laureate from 1850 to 1892. Now let's come back to what this uh, you know poem has to say. So this is a basically a story of a heroic princess and you will find that she forswears the world of men and founds a woman's university where men are forbidden to enter. Right? Obviously this is one of the feminist poem that you are getting written in the time frame when you know Victorian morality concept and other functions were uh, happening. So at that time frame women were not allowed to write. You have so many writers you know uh, were writing using pen names like you have Bronte sisters, you have, you know, uh, even the ri male writers, they were using pen names to hide their identity for different, different reasons. And at that time, Tennyson uh, and writers like Tennyson, they are writing poems which were about a woman university and where men were not even allowed to enter in those university. You will find that the prince to whom she was betrothed, you know, she, he will come back to that particular place and other stories that are revolving around that particular time frame. So this is one of the, uh, you know, very important feminist uh, poem that has been written by him uh, during the Victorian time frame, which was you know not acceptable at that time frame. But Tennyson is writing. You will find there are so many works that have been you know written, taking into inspiration from this particular poem. Like Gilbert and Sullivan came up with their opera called Princess Edda, and then there are other characters that are also been used. So these characters in the prologue they agree to participate in a storytelling game. When you think of a storytelling, you probably go back to people like Chaucer people like Boccaccio, Boccaccio's Decameron and Chaucer's Canterbury Tale which is about how storytelling was published, you know, famous there. So you will find in the prologue as well, there are characters who agree to participate in a storytelling game about a heroic princess in days of old based on ancient family chronicles. There are so many family chronicles, you might be knowing them as well. So the main narrative follows given in seven lengthy cantos. Kaise form mein hai? Cantos ke form mein hai with the prince as a narrator. This is all about this poetry. Go and uh, find some more interesting facts about this poetry as well. Another question is, 
who among the following has composed the lyrical drama called Hellas? Byron, Shelley, Wordsworth or Keats? You know these writers, they are primarily poets. But in your examination, they have asked dramas that are written by famous poets, be it Victorian or Romantic. Right? You know, in Victorian you have Tennyson, Browning and others. They are very famous for writing poetries, but they have also written plays. In the same way, these writers, they have also written dramas. Hellas is one of the dramas that is written by P.B. Shelley. It is a verse drama, drama written in a form of poetry. And it, it was, you know, written in 1821 and published in 1822. Remember, this is also an important year because in 1821, Adonis was also published. When Keats died, Shelley wrote an elegy called Adonis and he published it in 1821. And the next year, the, this particular work was published in 1822. You will find that it is about, you know, he wrote it while living in Pisa. That is why it is also a Pisa poem. Pisa poem is a collection of poems that is written by P.B. Shelley while he was living in Pisa. And you will find he was raising money for the Greek war of independence that was going on. And that with this purpose, he has written this particular poem. It was to be his one of the last poems that was published during his lifetime. And this is a verse drama. I'm saying poem because it is a, written in the verse form. So verse drama is written from the point of view of Ottoman Sultan and you will find it was inspired by Aeschylus work called Percy. Aeschylus, you know, famous tragedian. So the drama, it focuses on Sultan Mahmud who controls the Turkish attack on Greece. This is a reference to Renissa. That is how Renissa began when in 1453 there was a fall of Constantinople by the you know, attack that was done by Turkish people. So in that sense, this, all, this poetry, this question is also very important. Now, next question is who among the following is not a Yale critic? A question from literary theory, right? They have introduced literary theory in your slavers and they're asking questions from a very basic level from you know, writers belonging to which group or uh, from which theory they are part of. Same way, there is a school called Yale critics. There are four critics, Hartman, Paul Deman, Miller and Rolla Barth. Yale critics were the followers of Derrida. Derrida, who was a post-structuralist, and in out of four, uh, you know, uh, there is uh, these people: Hartman, jo you know, Paul Deman, and Miller. They were Yale critics, but Rolla Parth is not a Yale critic. Rather, he was a bridge between structuralism and post-structuralism. So, Yale critic, kya hai? Yale critic, as a naam hai, jo Derrida ke followers hai, jo Derrida ke deconstruction ki follow, uh, you know, jo theory hai, usko wo accept karte hai. To kai sare theories hai, jo 1970s में Yale University के साथ connect हुए और Derrida को follow करते हैं उनको हम Yale critics बोलते हैं after some time they have affiliated with University of California तो पहले Yale critics because of Yale, affiliation with Yale University and then when they were affiliated with California they uh, you know they became you know, they became part of University of California now as when you think of this school it is more closely allied with the post-structuralist dimensions of deconstruction. Remember, deconstruction, post-structuralist, what Derrida comes with. So if they are follower of deconstruction, if they are follower of Derrida, that simply means they are follower of deconstruction, post-structuralist dimension, that is, you know, going beyond the structure, going beyond what, uh, you know, people like Sheshore has to say. Uh, going beyond that, that is what these writers will be talking about. You will find different writers, people like Hartman, J.H. Miller, Harold Bloom, very important for creating the canon, you know, uh, uh, film men and others who are associated with this particular group. There are people who have, uh, you know, within this group, they have said that they are not part of it, but they are now considered as a part of this particular group. You can go, uh, you know, go through this particular group because this is also important for your examination. Now, yes, deconstruction and criticism. This is by Hartman and Hartman claims that both himself and Bloom, they are barely deconstructed. That is what I said. There are people who have not accepted them as deconstructors, but now they are part of it. And they, he also accepted that they have also written against deconstruction. So there are books that are associated with this particular group. There is a speech and phenomena. That is, uh, you know, by Derrida you will find uh, essays on Hessel's theory of science. There is of grammatology by Derrida related to this. There is writing and difference written by Derisa, Derrida. Allegories of reading, important one, that is by Paul Deman, a Yale critic. On deconstruction, Jonathan Kuller, Acts of Literature, Derrida. 
द वेक ऑफ डी कंस्ट्रक्शन बाई बर्बारा जॉनसन दे आर पीपल हु आर एसोसिएटेड विथ येल क्रिटिक्स यू नो विथ येल यूनिवर्सिटी एंड अ पार्ट ऑफ येल क्रिटिक्स देन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज टोड कचरू इन थ्री सर्कल्स ऑफ इंग्लिश ऑब्जर्व that english speaking countries are separated into three groups tod kachru is one of the literary historian and he talked about how there are three different you know groups in which you can separate those who speak english countries what is the correct order of it is it central circle middle circle or peripheral circle it is primary circle secondary or tertiary circle inner outer or expanding circle inner middle or outer circle this is one of the questions that they have asked in net examination uh, previously and that may be holding a very important uh, you know role for your pg entrance examination as well because indian literature is you know history of indian literature is also something which is a part of your unit so right answer will be inner circle outer circle and expanding circle ye hota kya hai kachru ne basically baat kiya ki jo kuch countries hai jo english bolti hai kuch uh, alag purpose se use karti hai to with the base of their purpose of using english language they have divided into three part the first one is inner circle another one is outer circle and the last one is expanding circle so different वेराइटीज इंग्लिश की हमको मिलती है राइट वी हैव सीन हाउ देर आर डिफरेंट वेराइटीज ऑफ इंग्लिश दैट आर स्पोकन फॉर सेवरल सेंचुरीज नाउ बट इट इज ओनली सरप्राइजिंगली यू नो रिसेंटली दैट द फील्ड ऑफ स्टडी हैज बिकम टू बी नोन एज वर्ल्ड इंग्लिश मल्टीपल डायलेक्ट यू नो हाउ पीपल आर यूजिंग इट तो देर आर idiolects different idiolects different different way than uh, you know different ways of speaking english aur usko recently abhi world englishes ke naam se jante hain so there is person in this field known as brej kachru and he divided this particular thing into taking into consideration from uh, you know randolph quirk kon kon se teen orders humko mile pehla circle hai inner circle aise countries jo were those in which english was traditionally the first language of the majority of the speakers so aise countries jahan pe इंग्लिश वॉज द फर्स्ट लैंग्वेज द मदर टंग ऑफ सो मेनी पीपल उसको क्या बोलेंगे इनर सर्कल बोलेंगे ऐसी कंट्रीज इनर सर्कल का पार्ट होंगी जैसे कि पीपल हु आर लिविंग इन ग्रेट ब्रिटेन और यूनाइटेड स्टेट और ऑस्ट्रेलिया ऑस्ट्रेलिया ये क्या है ये तीनों ऐसे कुछ कंट्रीज हैं जहां पे इंग्लिश एज ए मदर टंग यूज होता है देर फर्स्ट लैंग्वेज है ट्रेडिशनली तो वो इनर सर्कल का पार्ट होंगे इंडिया इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ इनर सर्कल देन वी हैव आउटर सर्कल आउटर सर्कल ऐसी कंट्रीज जहां पे इंग्लिश बहुत ऑफिशियल रोल प्ले करती है या इंस्टीट्यूशनल रोल प्ले करती है लाइक इंडिया राइट रिमेंबर हाउ इंडिया इज एन एसोसिएट इंग्लिश हैव एन एसोसिएट यू नो प्लेज एन इंपॉर्टेंट रोल एंड कंसिडर एज एन एसोसिएट लैंग्वेज ऑफिशियल लैंग्वेज और इंस्टीट्यूशनल रोल प्ले करती है जैसे कि नाइजीरिया केनिया इंडिया जितनी भी पोस्ट कॉलोनियल कंट्रीज आप पाओगे वेयर दिस ब्रिटिश पीपल दे वर रूलिंग यू विल फाइंड इंग्लिश आइदर इट इज वर्किंग एज एन ऑफिशियल लैंग्वेज और इंस्टीट्यूशनल प्लेइंग एन इंस्टीट्यूशनल रोल ऐसी कंट्रीज कहाँ आएंगी आउटर सर्कल के अंदर आएंगी then we have expanding circle again an important one aisa kaun sa circle hai aisi countries uske andar aayengi jo english jahan pe english jo hai wo keval aur keval as a foreign language use hoti hai just think of it first countries jahan pe uh, english is a mother tongue सेकेंड कंट्रीज जहाँ पे इंग्लिश इज यूज एन ऑफिशियल पर्पज और तीसरी ऐसी जहाँ पे इंग्लिश को फॉरन लैंग्वेज की तरह यूज किया जाता है इंग्लिश इज नॉट अ फॉरन लैंग्वेज फॉर अर्स नाउ बिकॉज वी आर यूजिंग इट फॉर डिफरेंट पर्पजेज बट देर आर कंट्रीज इन पार्ट ऑफ एक्सपेंडिंग सर्कल एंड दे यूज इंग्लिश मेयरली एज ए फॉरन लैंग्वेज देर इज नो इंस्टीट्यूशनल पर्पज देर इज नो ऑफिशियल पर्पज दैट इंग्लिश इज सर्विंग सच एज चाइना सच एज जापान एंड देर आर अदर मोर कंट्रीज विच आर पार्ट ऑफ expanding circle तो अगर आपसे एग्जाम में पूछता है इंग्लिश किस इंडिया का इंग्लिश जो है वो किस सर्कल में आएगा तो यू शुड बी नोइंग दैट नाउ इंडिया में इंग्लिश कैसे यूज की गई थी बटर इंग्लिश की तरह यूज की गई थी या जिसको हम किचन इंग्लिश या बियर इंग्लिश के नाम से भी जानते हैं रिमेंबर व्हेन ब्रिटिशर्स केम ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी केम इन इंडिया इन 1600 एंड दे हैव दैट इज हाउ दे हैव स्टार्टेड रूलिंग ओवर अस आफ्टर सर्टेन अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम एंड यू विल फाइंड दे नीडेड अ लेबर सो फॉर दैट रीजन दे हैव इंट्रोड्यूस इंग्लिश और बटर इंग्लिश इसलिए क्योंकि नॉर्मली अपना काम निकालने के लिए टूटी फूटी इंग्लिश इसको हम बोलते हैं उस तरीके से वो यूज करते थे तो उस तरीके का जो यूज था उसी को हम बटलर इंग्लिश बोलते हैं और 
यू नो ऑक्यूपेशनल डायलेक्ट की तरह उसको यूज किया गया पहले मद्रास प्रेसिडेंसी में आगे उसको यू नो सर्वेंट्स को सिखाया गया सो दैट दे कैन कम्युनिकेट थिंग्स विद द मास्टर्स मास्टर्स कौन है ब्रिटिश लोग हैं ठीक है थीके? Uh, इसके बारे में आप और जान सकते हैं नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज विच ब्रिटिश एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर पास द रिजोल्यूशन फॉर द प्रमोशन ऑफ यूरोपियन लिटरेट एंड साइंस एमोंग द नेटिव ऑफ इंडिया इंग्लिश एजुकेशन को किसने बोला पढ़ाना चाहिए इंडिया में किसने पास किया इज इट लॉर्ड हॉस्टिंग लॉर्ड कॉनवेलिस लॉर्ड बेंटिक और लॉर्ड हैटिन रिमेंबर देर वर सर्टन चार्टर एक्ट फर्स्ट चार्टर केम एक्ट देन सेकेंड चार्टर एक्ट ऑफ एटीन थर्टी फाइव एंड दैट फर्स्ट चार्टर एक्ट में क्या हुआ था देर वॉज सर्टन अमाउंट दैट वॉज गिवेन टू एजुकेट फॉर एजुकेशन बट पीपल वर इन डाउट वेदर द रोल ऑफ एजुकेशन इट शुड बी इन हिंदी और इट शुड बी इन इंग्लिश और इन एनी अदर लैंग्वेज विच वॉज प्रिवेलिंग इन इंडिया एंड दैट इज द टाइम वेन पीपल थॉट यू नो पीपल लाइक लॉर्ड बेंटिंग हु वॉज यू नो हु वॉज वॉयस राय एट दैट टाइम एंड ही डिसाइडेड टू अपॉइंट Uh, macaulay you might be knowing about minutes of macaulay he said that you know english should be used as a medium of instruction in india so 1835 macaulay's minute is also very important and they have asked questions from there as well but it was lord benting who asked macaulay to come up with his minutes and that is how he came up with 1835 minutes again a very important point to remember then match the authors with the text remember this is rita kuthari probal das gupta brij b kachru abhi humne padha tha inke bare mein balzinder ke mahal and then the works are queens english indianization of english translating india the otherness of english ye bahut important works hain ye charo hi related hain aapke is jo hai padhai se aap dekhoge ki इसका सही ऑर्डर है ये मैं आपको सीधे एक एक बता देता हूँ द क्वींस इंग्लिश द क्वींस हिंग्लिश नॉट इंग्लिश बट हिंग्लिश द वे वी यूज इंग्लिश ऑन सर्टन एप्स लाइक व्हाट्सएप एंड यू नो फेसबुक सो दिस इज व्हाट हिंग्लिश इज द क्वींस हिंग्लिश इज बेसिकली अ फन एंड फैसिनेटिक लुक एट इंग्लिश द वे वी डू इट राइट अ वेराइटी ऑफ इंग्लिश विथ एलिमेंट्स ऑफ एशियन लैंग्वेजेस एंड दिस एक्साइटिंग टाइटल टेक्स अ लाइट हर्टेड लुक एट हिंग्लिश अ वेराइटी ऑफ इंग्लिश कंबाइंड विथ एलिमेंट्स ऑफ साउदर्न एशियन languages this is bk mahal the way we used it it is written by bk mahal then we have the indianization of english humne dekha how when we use english we add certain indian elements to it so brej kachru has something to say about it in his book called the indianization of english then translating india it is by rita kuthari and the otherness of english again a very important work it is written by probal das gupta you will find there are other writers as well and they talked about how english in india is in a way used to you know uh, to not to help us rather to harm us in different ways how we are in a grip of western education and english is one of the reasons for that so we do have people like thiango and others who have you know talked about this particular thing but in india we have these people who have you know discussed about these things and these books are also important to remember next question an indian english poet once remarked that his discipline and education gave him his outer whereas his indian origin gave him inner form reflecting a part of this claim is a famous essay he called so you know uh, indian english poet ne bola ki jo outer form hai wo uski education aur discipline se aa raha hai bas uska jo indian origin hai uski wajah se uska inner form aa raha hai there's essay four essays aap dekh rahe ho is there a native way of thinking can the subaltern speak where do we go from here and then is there an indian way of thinking there is no work called as there a native way of thinking is there an indian way of thinking is a very important work by ak ramanujan you might be knowing him because he is very famous poet used vernacular language uh, dialects and references in his poetry but he has written this text called is there an indian way of thinking because there was a debate going on related to you know is there an indian way of thinking or not and when you will go through this essay you will find he talked about how you know there was a uh, russian dramatist and he used to perform you know uh, you know used to perform his dramas while 
टॉकिंग अबाउट द सेम सेंटेंस इन फाइव डिफरेंट मैनर कैसे एक सेंटेंस को आप एंगर के साथ बोल सकते हो कैसे एक सेंटेंस को आप हंस के सेम चीज को बोल सकते हो अलग अलग एक्सप्रेशन उसको टेस्ट करते थे सेम वे ए के रामानुजन ने क्या किया आस दिस क्वेश्चन इस तरह एन इंडियन वे ऑफ थिंकिंग एंड ही रिस्पॉन्डेड इन फाइव डिफरेंट वेज पहले इस पे फोकस करके इंडियन पे फोकस करके यू नो वे पे फोकस करके थिंकिंग पे फोकस करके एंड ही रिस्पॉन्डेड टू इट कि देर वॉज एन इंडियन वे ऑफ थिंकिंग बट देर इज नो मोर इंडियन वे ऑफ थिंकिंग and this is to ask whether if anything uh, anything which unites india in general or not because we are you know there are so many communities there are so many languages that we speak so to unite india with one thing is not possible not with the language not with anything there is nothing which is universal in india and that's why he will be talking about it how you know we are not actually uh, thinking about one being you know one finding about one thing that is common but there is nothing which is common in india there was nothing which is a, you know uh, which is an indian way of thinking it used to be in puranas but it is no more except present today and he also talked about whether we do th- you know is there an indian way of thinking or it is not as well so different dimensions we will be discussing that we will be taking these things further down but it is an essay which is written by ak ramanujan and he will you will you know find these things and he says that it does not exist now it used to be and we will talk about that there is nothing which is universal in india remember there is nothing which is universal in india even uh, you know proverbs which talks about uh, for example something which is moral but you will find in india if you know there are proverbs like ki agar kuch jhoot bolne se किसी का भला होता है तो हमको झूठ बोल देना चाहिए राइट right? तो ऐसे बहुत सारे वर्जन दैट मीन मोरलिटी इज ऑल्सो फिक्स इन इंडिया दर इज नथिंग विच इज यूनिवर्सल एंड यूल फाइंड ए के रामानुजन टॉक्स अबाउट दीज थिंग्स इन हिज एस से यूल बी डीलिंग विद दीज थिंग्स इन अवर क्लासेज एज वेल सो फॉर नाउ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन मै कॉलेज मिनिट रिमेंबर एटीन थर्टी फाइव राइट शॉर्ट टू four options a uh, promote european literature and science among the natives second impart knowledge of english literature and science through translated texts encourage branches of native learning by more useful studies stop expenditure on the publication of oriental works and expend funds only on english education kya iska sahi answer hoga ye char options mein se aapko choose karne hain and the right answer is he talks about to promote european literature and science among the natives and stop expenditure on the publication of oriental works and expend funds only on english education ye uska pura function tha to aap dekhoge there is nothing about translation text there is nothing about you know native learning because he was against native learning so obviously we will be talking about english language using english mediums for education so there was no role for native learning and he was not talking about translation text as well so it is just about using english education and fund is you know is using spend to fund uh, fund to spend on english education that is the right answer then uh, next question this there are certain uh, you know statements manusmriti was translated in english by william jones this is the first option second abhigyan sakuntalam very famous he was it was translated in english by james princep remember translation studies is also a part of your syllabus right kalidas is known as the shakespeare of india this is true you uh, might be knowing this but about first and second you have to choose which of the statement given above are correct right so the right answer will be first and three why because abhigyan sakuntalam was first indian drama to be translated into a western language and who was the person it is sir william jones who translated it in 1789 so william james jones jo hai wo pehle insaan hai jinhone abhigyan sakuntalam ko ट किया था पहली बार तो सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट जो है वो आपका गलत हो जाता है देन इट वॉज अ ड्रामा बाई कालीदास हु कंपोज इट इन अबाउट फिफ्थ सेंचुरी सी दैट इज जनरली कंसिडर टू बी द ग्रेटेस्ट इंडियन लिटरी वर्क ऑफ एनी पीरियड नाउ मनुस्मृति मनुस्मृति के बारे में आप जानते होंगे रिसेंटली बहुत डिबेट में था आफ्टर वट हैपन इन जे एन यू सो मनुस्मृति वॉज वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट संस्कृत टेक्स्ट स्टडीड बाय यूरोपियन फिलोलॉजिस्ट यू विल कम अक्रॉस द रेफरेंसेस ऑफ मनुस्मृति इन नीड से एज वेल इन गोथ इन जर्मन लिटरेचर एज वेल एंड दे हैव यू नो टॉक्ड अबाउट इट 
uh, in positive manner, not in negative manner. Now it was this work is first translated into English by Sir William Jones. So translation से बहुत questions आते हैं. आपको ये भी चीज याद रखनी है. So this version was published in 1794. So thus first statement is also correct. Kalidas is known as the Shakespeare of India, obviously because of his space in Indian literature. So the place that Shakespeare enjoys in English literature is the same place that is enjoyed by Kalidas in Sanskrit literature. Now next question, identify the correct players. Ivan McEwen, Amsterdam is very famous work. Italo Calvino, postmodernism. If if on a winter's night a traveler, you will find there is one traveler and he is reading a book called If on a winter's night a traveler, a very important postmodern technique where in a book you are reading the same book. A character is using the same book. Amitav Ghosh, The Circle of Reason, again an important text. Why? Because you will find this is the first work where golf was introduced a uh, golf place was introduced for the very first time ddm thomas wrote everest hotel everest hotel is by alan shelley not by dm thomas then lessing the testament the testament is a novel by uh, margaret atwood not by doris lessing to kon kon se sahi the upar ke teen option sahi hain aur ye dono galat hai theek hai A, A, B, and C will be the right answer. Everest Hotel is by Alan Shelley. You can go through his another work, very important work called the Trotter Norma. Right? He was a he was a 1991 Sahit Academy Award winner as well. You can you know talk, you know read about him as well. Margaret Atwood, you know, very famous 2019 Booker Award uh, is given to the Testament along with there was one another book the uh, you know share किया गया था 2019 के uh, Booker Prize को. so we'll stop here and we'll meet tomorrow with a different with a different questions and hope it will help you thank you so much